yeah, somehow you can manage, you know, you can be flexible with your money. I didn't have a lot because I offered it to some masters, yeah, some monks yeah, everywhere I went, even though I didn't have much. But sometimes I was like that, I offer everything and then I had nothing, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. I thought I would survive somehow. I thought God would take care of me. But he didn't. I didn't see anything that coming from the sky. When <laughs> I was stupid. I was thinking God would take care. But how? God doesn't make money, okay? Otherwise, we would all be rich, right? We wouldn't have to work, no? God doesn't care about money. That's why He doesn't understand us. <laughs> That's why somebody has to come down here, live like you, suffer with you, you know, going through up and down, everything with you. That's the price to pay. And somebody asked me, uh, if you're a master, how come you don't have any magic power? Uh, prove it to me that you're a master, do something. I said, what? Hula hop? <laughs> I do what? Yeah? I have hands, okay? I have a brain. I have feet. I have a functional body and a very intelligent mind. Why would I need God to do anything for me just to take care of my little physical body, this? You understand me? Oh yeah, now and then maybe you have some miracle if you're in a desperate situation, but I won't let myself get into a desperate situation and then become a beggar for God's mercy. Yeah? That's not right. God has done a lot already. God created all of you, look at you, and make a lot of trouble already for Him. <laughs> Why would I also come and say, hey, me too, <laughs> add me to your problem list? <laughs> you got that? Yeah. Let's be fair, no? God created and took care of the whole creation, yeah? And gave us so many things already, no? It's just we are sometimes lazy, don't do anything good. Just do anything bad even, some bad thing even, yeah, and make trouble. And then blame God for everything. Mm. Like today, I ate a lot before I came. <laughs> so my clothes <laughs> feel very tight. That's my problem, it's not God's problem, is it? <laughs> if I had not eaten so much, <laughs> I would have looked better in these clothes. <laughs> I knew it too late. I just explained before already, right? Have you, have you heard it or translated it? Yeah, I won't repeat again. It's a very shameful thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for so many days I didn't have a good appetite, you know? And uh, today I cooked something for myself. Uh, I thought I would feel better, yeah? Because I didn't sleep much and I didn't rest much and have a lot, a lot of stress and work recently, yeah. So I thought, okay, I spoil myself by cooking congee, <laughs> rice soup, <laughs> yeah. And whatever left over from the other day, you know, I just throw it inside. So that's my luxury day today. <laughs> and because I cook for myself, then of course it tastes good. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's your, your own taste, yeah? When you cook for yourself and when it's warm and ready and you feel ready to eat us, oh, it tastes good. So I was thinking I cook a little bit more, so I, I eat two times, today one and tomorrow, I'll continue again. I finish it all <laughs> in one time. <laughs> Only after I wear this beautiful dress that I realize, oh, what a mistake I have made. <laughs> I could eat just a little bit and come back to eat later, you know? But when you have appetite, yeah, when something you like, and you just continue without thinking. Yeah, it's all your fault, all your fault. <laughs> if you're not here, would I have to suffer like this, huh? <laughs> huh? It's not God's fault, it's your fault. <laughs> Human made, right? Yeah, it's all your fault. You made it. Yeah. Anyway, have you eaten yet? Breakfast? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Hey, we have only two, two meals here, maximum, okay? So just drooling and waiting, okay? I'm going soon, so you can eat, don't worry. <laughs> what do you mean, no? I'm busting inside my dress. <laughs> ah, okay. Not too bad, really, yeah. 
yeah, I didn't think I would fit in this kind of dress anymore at my age. I haven't worn this for a long time, this kind, you know. I always wear loose, you know, right? You're getting older, right? More freedom and comfort is the best. <laughs> it's not about looks anymore, right? <laughs> it's freedom. Ah, but I didn't know this dress was so small. It looked so big hanging in there, you know, flat. So it was big. I thought it was similar to what I used to wear all the time. <laughs> Ah, I took it to my area and wore it, and I said, oh, oh, are you going down like this? <laughs> With all the buttons, it doesn't fit together anymore. How are you going to go down? Ah, so I just put a scarf on here. That's a, uh, this is also another tip for you. We can put it on TV, SMTV, tip of the day. <laughs> uh, if you happen to eat too much and you still want to look uh, nice and tidy, then you wear a scarf in the front <laughs> and tie it like this so that it stays right where the buttons are. <laughs> Cover whatever gap, you know, <laughs> that you yourself created by your appetite. <laughs> oh, but I'm very happy, you know what? A long time I haven't eaten such a beautiful, tasty meal because I you know mostly don't have enough time to cook a lot. Yeah, just eat what's simple from the fridge or whatever they give. Yeah. But it's not hot anymore, yeah. Because sometimes people bring food for me, yeah. But then I'm too busy, and then I feel I could eat, you know. Sometimes I feel hungry, but then oh, I think no, no, you know, time, you know, time pressure. I have to finish the job first. And by the time I finish my job, I'm over hungry or something. It doesn't taste good anymore. Also, the food became cold, yeah. So today when. <laughs> When I cook for myself, ah, oh, just the right thing to do. <laughs> it's just the clothes are not right. It's not me. <laughs> okay, I deserve some good food sometimes. Cook for myself, right? It's the clothes the problem. This is the problem, right? Yeah, you are the problem. <laughs> ah, there, you came for Buddhist teaching, Catholic teaching, and you hear only food. <laughs> Don't worry, just relax, okay? You will get home, okay? You will get home sooner or later. <laughs> Whatever I say to you is also a lesson, understand? So if you become a master in the future, don't eat. <laughs> don't eat, especially when you go see your disciples. Understand that? And if you're a woman, then even more so, don't eat at all. <laughs> Keep your figure, yeah? The outside is also important <laughs> to many people. Yeah, that's why I wear beautiful clothes, you know? Jesus went barefoot. Buddha wear just a monk's robe. Bodhidharma didn't even shave, just sat there. And they try all kinds, didn't work. I try this to see, <laughs> see if it works better or not. It, it did work, huh? It works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very convenient, see? I have the nice clothes that I design, most of them, then I can wear it beautifully, I so can sell it, you see? Huh? Two businesses in one contract. <laughs> yeah, so I earn money, look good at the same time, no? <laughs> and people like to see me. See that? Uh, yeah, so I thought maybe in the future, if you become Buddha, wear nice clothes. Okay? Put some makeup on, everything. <laughs> High heels, okay? Yeah, then maybe it works, yeah? Yeah, what for people go to see movies, all the beautiful movie stars? People like beauty, no? Maybe like that. So I'm going to. Well, I don't think they listen, but I'm, I want to advise all the masters to wear nice clothes. <laughs> yeah? Mm. Just don't eat before you go out to see disciples, <laughs> before the satsang. Sunday, don't eat at all. <laughs> Until you finish, go home. But sometimes I work so hard that I don't uh, have time to eat. And when I want to eat, I'm too tired. <laughs> I just drop. <laughs> or sit in there, struggle whether or not to eat or to go sleep. <laughs> and then the body is too tired, so the body wins. So I say, okay, never mind, you can still eat tomorrow. Yeah. And now just take a rest like that. Uh.
because if I keep eating all the time, I think these clothes, I can't even look at them, not to talk about wearing them, you see? Even though it has a little gap between the buttons, I still can wear it. <laughs> Understand me? Yeah. It's good like that. It's good that I don't always have good food and don't have a good appetite. But I try to eat because it's good for the world, good affinity with many beings when you take in food. That's why Sekamoni, he went out for hours every day, every morning, being a prince and having so many disciples. Do you think he needed to even go out to beg for food? Hmm? No, even if he wanted to, his father would have given him everything he needed. Yeah, he even built a summer palace, a winter palace for him to cool him off, to make him comfortable in all kinds of weather. How would he not bring him food every day? You see what I mean? It's just the Buddha was merciful. He wanted to use this way to give the people outside a chance to earn merit, to be liberated, at least one person liberated, even without initiation. Just seeing him once, being good to him, giving him food, that's enough to earn that person a place in high heaven, liberation, outside of the three worlds already. You remember one Buddhist story I told you? That uh, was a very poor woman, and one of his disciples only, a monk disciple, not himself even, encountered the woman, and she was crying, and he comforted her and asked her what was the matter, remember? And then she says she was too poor and being so harassed every day, and she didn't want to live anymore, etc., etc. And the monk taught her how to sell her property. Remember that? If you have even seen that or not. Too busy. Don't look. It was on TV. It was on uh, Supreme Master Television. Every day there is something. Show on there. They show my face there. <laughs> <laughs> I see my face sometimes, and listen to my talks sometimes. Because sometimes it catches my ears. Huh? Wow! Very, very wonderful story. <laughs> because sometimes whatever I said, I don't remember anymore. Very little. Okay. Maybe the main point, but not the whole thing. Not the live speaking when I was speaking. It was different, you know. So she says she has nothing to offer, you know? So how could she be liberated if she has nothing at all? But she had some grass, dried grass, that she was supposed to, to be able to sleep on the grass, you know, like the dry uh, hay or something like that. And she sleeps on it. So the monk said, you can offer that, you see? So she put some clean grass on one side, right? in the heart, probably offering to that monk on the Buddha. And then she sat on one side. And then that night she passed away, naturally, anyway. And then she went straight to heaven. Yeah. Became a chief of a large retinue up there. Yeah. And then she couldn't see her body laying down there. And then she took her retinue Together, went down back to the, the earth and buried that, her body in honor and all that. Even just grass, yeah, and offer it with heart, with respect. Earn a big place in heaven that many people can only dream of but never can attain. See that? Hmm? Why am I talking about this? What was it before? What was it? You didn't listen. All of you don't understand anything. <laughs> ah, I spoke English, no. <laughs> Caught you, huh? What did I say before that? Now, the blonde there, tell me. <laughs> you what? Didn't hear anything. Yes, I understand. So what did I say before? You tell uh, of the grass and the non. Yeah, yeah, but why did I say that? Why did I tell you the story? Hmm? Affinity. Ah, affinity. The Buddha doesn't need to do those things. Ah, the Buddha, yeah. You see that? I told you whatever I said, I forget right away. But you should not. 
What do you mean, me too? You did not speak anything. <laughs> you should not forget what I speak. <laughs> You're a disciple, no. <laughs> You're supposed to remember everything that Master says. No excuse. Yeah. All right. So that is the thing. You know, the Masters, the Buddhas, the saints, they are very, very compassionate in so many different ways. So people sometimes misunderstand, thinking they don't want to work or they don't want to earn their money and they go there and beg for, for food. It's not like that. At that time, the Buddha already became Buddha and enlightened already. He had no need. He couldn't manifest food for himself by love. Any saints who attain the Buddhahood in a high level of spiritual practice can manifest many things. Or if you're lucky, <laughs> if you're lucky. Meaning, of course, at least the food they can manifest. Food and clothes, they can do that. But some masters cannot. And not allow, not we cannot. Have to exchange many things before coming down. Mm. 